Now, as a result of me going through adolescence at a time when YouTube was at its golden years, I have seen countless bizarre channels pop up in my feed, only to be reminded that they existed years later. And while I know this individual subject today has been somewhat forgotten, given the amount of attention it got in the past, I'm surprised no one has done a proper follow-up on the subject, so let's get right into that. You may be familiar with the P. Diddy Superfan or the P. Diddy Stalker video on YouTube from the channel Human Being 151. In the present day, the original video has been taken down from the original uploader, However, various re-uploads still exist online. Human Being 151, or Insomniac was the other name that he went by, was one of these early YouTube channels from the 2010s that saw a lot of attention early on for his morbid obsession over the artist P. Diddy. While there are around a thousand videos on this channel that have been deleted, the most notorious video that you might be familiar with is the one where he is seen going through a gigantic room of notebooks, directly addressing Mr. Diddy and showing off how much work he had done for him. As the video progresses, the viewer is greeted to a completely insane collection of notebooks spanning to the closet where it is revealed and implied that all of the notebooks are filled with the exact same phrase. While the poor video quality and camera focus might make it somewhat difficult to read, the notebooks would read, Brother Diddy, please accept, likely in reference to a MySpace request directed at P. Diddy. Despite this video getting a ton of attention, what a lot of people seem to overlook is the fact that many of the notebooks seem completely untouched. While I must admit the video definitely contains this bizarre and creepy aesthetic of an obsessed fan, there's actually a lot more to the subject that I found many individuals have left out. Much of the attention surrounding the popularity of this video came from a 2010 Cracked article that highlighted the whole saga, where it wrote, 
human being 151 who goes by the name Insomniac has a desire to meet P. Diddy that is so intense it can only be quantified as Lovecraftian. His YouTube profile says that he has written 150,000 songs, and while he has nearly 1,300 videos, only one of them has any music or sanity. There is only one message in all of these videos. Diddy needs to check his MySpace inbox. He's been sent an important message. Various titles for these plaintive clips include Diddy, Dear Mr. Diddy, Please Read This, Diddy TV Official, and Diddy 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 Diddy, Diddy P Diddy, Puff Diddy Diddy Twitter. Now, it really only takes a few seconds to check this guy's YouTube channel on the Wayback Machine to see that not every single video was directed at P Diddy. I mean, if you take a look at the featured video that he had on his channel, it was him doing a cover of Enrique Iglesias. Now, while the popular narrative will say that this guy ended up deleting his channel as a result of all this harassment that came in from this Cracked article, that's not actually true. This individual was banned for violating YouTube's terms of service, and there is actually a reason behind him putting P. Diddy in literally every title on his channel. Because back in the day, you used to be able to game the YouTube SEO algorithm and be able to put your videos above other people by literally just spamming keywords. You may recall those people who used to put a ton of extra tags in the description as a way of ranking higher back in the day. Before 2012, when YouTube switched to watch time and engagement, all you needed was a good title and search results could be keywords stuffed to the brim. YouTube's search algorithm was actually so bad that reply videos used to be able to write off the success of another video with the rise of reply girls. Some of you might remember those. And as a way of driving this point home to prove to you that this individual behind this channel is so obsessed with using sketchy tactics to increase their views, I want to show you some of his other content. Because a quick Google search for human being 151 will lead you to various 4chan threads where people were quick to realize that this individual had left their Google Plus account linked to their YouTube channel, which led people to another second channel by the name of Anil. Here we see a video that is also left over from the exact same room called All of My 100,000 Songs. However, oddly enough, it doesn't seem to fit the exact same narrative that was placed by the Cracked article. There is no mention of Diddy whatsoever. Because in this video, he would write in Comic Sans, I have been writing songs since a very long, long time ago. The number of my songs got increased to almost more than 100,000 songs I have wrote. The only dream I have is to sing them all and bring the true reality. And at the end of the video, he would write, and that's the reason I named myself Insomniac. I've never slept well, no sleep in my head, just music, music. Leave it to crack.com, a content farm that literally lets anybody write for them and get paid to give us such well-researched content. Going on to the rest of the channel, you'll find various videos of the guy doing covers of songs, like in this video called Drake featuring 2 Chains' new official video, where he starts the video by picking his nose and then pulling a lime wire and starting to sing Junior Senior's move. Continuing on to the YouTube account's profile, you'll find a Flickr account by the name of Anil Real, where he can be seen doing some lit flexing. And where this gets far more bizarre is when you realize that these photos can be found on various YouTube channels like Jessica Hain. And Jessica seems to have an unhealthy obsession with Anil, kind of like he did for P. Diddy, because she made a lot of fan tributes to him. My personal favorite video is I Love His Swag. I must say, Jessica looks a lot like girl number 44 from Girls in Jean Shorts vs. Jean Skirts from TheChive.com. Now, if you go down the rabbit hole, you'll find a lot of YouTube accounts with women reminiscent of singles in your area, and they all love to make tributes to Anil too. Girls like Lisa Alvaro, Denny I, One I Loves Anil, Lauren David, and another girl by the name of Selena249 on Flickr. After a bit of digging, I found that he'll go under two different names, one being Anil Ayer and Anil John. And it's incredibly interesting to see how much some people don't change over the years. Because I was going to wrap this video up here, but I actually managed to find out what he's doing in the present day, and holy shit. Now, if you search for this name in more recent videos, all of them include him flexing in front of a Lamborghini, so he must be doing well for himself, I guess. And as it turns out, the source for many of these videos come from a Facebook page with around 600,000 likes. But to call this person's growth organic, I would beg to differ. Here it lists him as a musician, band, slash designer, yet I could not find a single piece of music that would contribute to the success, along with any clothing the guy ever designed. Generally speaking, people become well known for work that they do, and even if you're flexing on Instagram, there's still usually some attempt to sell you something, yet that is not present here. We know this is the same person because some of the same photos from Flickr appear on this Facebook page. What I find even more incredible was the fact that he had an Instagram account with 370,000 followers, but that account got banned. And where this gets even more pathetic is that if you look at the comments on this video, many people are commenting the exact same thing multiple times in a row, yet the profiles, if you go through their pages, look somewhat legitimate. 
It looks like Anil upped his game from making fake girls, having themselves make fake tributes to him, to joining engagement botnets to inflate his self-worth. The only question that I'm left with after looking at this entire situation is why did he have all of those notebooks? It's really the real mystery here. This is Barely Sociable. Have a good night. Thank you.